Learning to blend sounds together is a major step in learning to read. In this video, I'm going to share some exercises and activities you can do to help your child blend their sounds and learn to read. Hi, I'm Tessa, and here at Lessons for Little Blessings, we talk about math, reading, writing, and other activities to help your kids thrive. So if you want to jump right into the blending activities, you can look in the time codes down below in the description box and just jump right to whatever you would like to check out. But first we're going to talk really quick about what blending is and why you need to pay attention to it. So blending just is simply put uh, two sounds said together. So these are separate sounds and put together you will still hear each of those individual sounds as opposed to say a digraph where that is two letters put together that makes a totally different sound. So for example, we might blend together B L for bowl. So you can still hear the B and you can still hear the O as opposed to say the S H digraph instead of S. It's a totally new sound. Sh. Okay, so that's a little bit about what blends are. Now blends are super important because they are how kids put sounds together to decode text and read. So when talking about blending, really any two sounds can be put together and blended together. There are very common ones that we will look at later on in what's called a blends chart. You might hear things like S blends or R blends, and that is just the consonant S or R with other consonants after it. We also talk about blending, and that could just be putting sounds together. So C-A-T, we could blend that those sounds together However, it's not on this chart considered a blend. So it can be a little confusing. So like I said, just simply put blends is just putting two sounds together. So what's the big deal about all of this? Why am I talking about it? Um, kids have to have an understanding of sounds. They have to know letters make sounds, but it goes beyond that. They have to be able to hear individual sounds too. Kids also need that phonemic awareness, which is more understanding the sound and the differences on putting them together, blending, and then segmenting them, taking them apart. They really have to have fluid knowledge of all of that to be able to decode or read a new word as they come across it in a story. However, we can't only rely on sounds because in text, they're gonna see the visual representation of that letter. So in this video, we're gonna start with some really basic sound oral games where students have to hear, and then it'll progress into using the sound knowledge along with seeing the letters, uh, which is exactly what they're gonna do as they're reading and trying to figure out new words. If your child has not mastered their letter sounds, so they don't know the sound that every letter makes, or they don't know how to identify their letters, then those would be first steps. So I would have your child work on that before you spend too much time on the blending activities in this video. So I will link in the description box below some videos you can check out to help your child with that. Couple more things to note before we get started. Um, the first is just to be aware of uh, different sounds. So a lot of consonants have what's called a stop sound. Uh, for example, b, b. So it's really challenging, and you might catch yourself doing this too, it's really challenging to not attach a vowel to that. So for b, a lot of times if we kind of we try to emphasize the sound so much so that we add a typically a short U sound to that, like B. Okay, it's not just B. It was more like B. Uh. U in a lot of the vowels are continuous sounds. Um, consonants, there are some consonants as well, like M. Mm, I could just keep doing that sound, so that's a continuous sound. So just be mindful of that. Um, as we're trying to emphasize what sound letters make, a lot of times we can attach a vowel sound onto a consonant. And that just can create some issues, 
nothing that can't be fixed, but just something to keep an eye on because your student or your child might start hearing that B as B-U. And so as they're decoding a word to say bat, it could become more like B-A-T because they hear that U at the end. So hopefully that makes sense. And then lastly, I recommend starting with two letter words. So students can just become really familiar with blending two letter words together before they bump into three letter words. So for example, am, up, in, those words, they've got two sounds in them to blend together to make that word. So that's just a great place to start and then you can move on to three, four, and beyond. So some quick little sound games that you can do, and these don't have any real name that I'm aware of. So basically you're going to say uh, sounds slowly and separately, and then the child hearing that will then have to figure out what word it is. So for example, and you'll start saying them very slowly, and then you can kind of say them a little faster and faster together. So let's do k, a, so I did three separate sounds, and then you would try to have your child guess what word. And if they can't figure it out, they might not at the beginning, then try saying it a little bit slower, but a little bit more blended. K, at, cat, cat. So it's really subtle, but if you can hear the difference on when they're segmented or separated on as you slowly start blending them together so you can do that with just a ton of different words just to get them hearing all those individual sounds and then what it sounds like when they're put together and then you might start putting two of the sounds together so like he n he n hen okay so you you started blending already the h and e as opposed to eh, n. So you might do that just little bits here and there. This game can really be super short. You could be driving in the car, you could be making dinner and just throw a few at them. Um, so it doesn't have to be this huge sit down thing. Another sound game you could do, I'll just call it copy my blend. So I might say a word, um, I might say black and I emphasized it there, which you might do at the beginning as they're learning their blends and the sounds. You're trying to get them to hear that beginning. This blend happens to be at the beginning, that bull, and then they can come up with another word that starts that same way. So they might say blue, okay, black, blue. They both use the same BL, bull, at the beginning. Okay, so that could be one you do. You could have them start it and then you find a word which might be easier as they're learning that game as well. And then you could do this, um, you could do it with the blends on the chart that we'll talk about or you could do it with what we also call word families. And these are um, chunks of the word that are the same. So at, there's a lot of words that are in the at word family. Bat, cat, mat, bat. Okay, so sometimes those are easier to hear because they're also kind of like the part that rhymes. So that might be another way, but just getting the students hearing different sounds and putting them together. Okay, we're gonna show how you can do some of these sound games and you can add some movement to help them remember. So I could say, ah, n, and then he puts them together. So it's sound, sound, together. Now that works with two sound words because we have two hands. So what would that be? Ah, n, on. On. Ah, n, on. So you could also use um, your, your arms, an easy one that we would do sounds on the arms. So let's do a three sound word like mad. So m, ad. And then when you blend it, you kind of just slide down Man. so similar similar to the Man. slide <laughs> so m a d mad so you slide it down what about one like web 
Web. 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 So just another way to work with those sounds and add some movement in to help. I'm gonna show you another quick sound game to work on and I think it'll make more sense if I show you with the letters. So I'm gonna show you with the letters, although you could do this without the letters as well. Um, but once you see it, then it might make more sense what I mean without the letters. So k, a would be the individual sounds, right? And then scooting it over, ka. Now sometimes this can be really helpful for students to actually physically move them, so that's why I love any kind of letters, um, magnetic letters, the little letter cards, squares, tiles, all those kind of things, having the students actually move them can be really beneficial and just add that kinesthetic movement. So, and you can do this um, with all of the vowels and you can really run through you know, and just move one out of the way or just continue building. I guess you'd have to have quite a few of the vowels or switch to a new one. But just getting them to see what it what it is to put sounds together. T, a, ta, k, a, ka. And then you can just really stick in any of them. D, a, da, ta, da. So you could go through that even with the E and we can switch out any, any consonants to put with it just so they hear that. Te, de, well, that's a whole nother story. So maybe we won't worry about that yet. Le, okay, and you could, you could create a whole chart with this or you could just do it with the sound. There's going to be a word family video coming out, so I won't spend too much time with it, but just doing this piece together at, and then you can have them see if they put other sounds with it. K, at, cat, d, at, dat, l, at, lat. And again, it might not always be a real word, but just so they see what it is like to put sounds together. The next sound game I wanna talk about are called Elkonin boxes, or also known as sound boxes. These are great for helping students segment those sounds and then blend them together. So I would suggest starting with a two sound word so they will have two boxes. Now these boxes represent different sounds. Okay, so let's say for example, up, and we want them to hear, and you can use any kind of little marker. You could use rocks, you could use these little two-sided counters, you could use pennies, really anything, um, or you don't need anything. You can have them tap as well. The idea is just them matching that movement, the motion with the sound, okay? We're just trying to get more parts of those that brain firing. So as they hear a sound, they're going to either tap the box or move something into the box. So, uh, p, okay, uh, p, or if we have, um, in, 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 okay, you really want them to separate those sounds as opposed to in okay so you want them to make the movement for each individual sound so starting with two sounds and you can do this i'm showing you without the picture um, because it really is a sound game and so you want them to really focus on the sounds the pictures do offer a lot of support though also great for ell students um, but it's also good to do it maybe without any pictures. So then maybe you'll move into a three sound word. Let's do the word pig. P -i -g. I'll show you again. P -i -g. So one movement per sound. Okay, so this is really helping them to hear those individual sounds and then as they go through it, they can do it faster to blend those together, 
Okay, so these are just basic sound boxes. And then you can also find some with pictures, which again, just gives them that visual cue if they need a little bit of support. So same idea, the picture tells them the word. And these are nice too, because they can work on it on their own. So independent work, as opposed to this one, you would be giving them the word. So, eh, n. So probably a little easier if I do one layer to scoot it. Okay. So this is a good example of a word. Um, a lot of times we're working with CVC words, consonant, vowel, consonant words, which are three sounds, three letters, but that's not always the case. So you might give them a word like this, where if they know what that word looks like, they would know it's not just a three letter word, but there are three sounds. So again, we're working on the sounds here. So you want them to hear the different, three different sounds. Mm, ow, s, mm, ow, s, mouse. If you're doing the sound box stuff and you're trying to get them to isolate it, you can just do a simple like finger tap too. So they would just like tap each sound they hear. So if they, it's just a two sound word, these are the only two fingers that'll be tapping. Three sounds, they would be tapping three. So like m, ow, s. So we did three taps. Good. Next. Uh huh. Our next one. Say the word. What do you hear next in the word? Bug. Bug. You? Mm hmm. Uh. What do you hear at the end? Bug. E. Okay, try it again. Do the whole word. That word is bug. Let's try it again. What do you hear first? Move that one first. What do you hear last when I say bug? Okay, push it up and say it. There you go. Can you do the whole thing now? Bug. Good, that word is bug. Say it with me. Bug. Bug. We'll see. Um, resources like this that have the letters in them, B-E-D, and those are great when you're trying to work more on spelling and writing. Um, so it's great for that. When you're just wanting to teach your child to read, I would stick strictly with sounds at the beginning of using these sound boxes. Word cards or flashcards can also be really helpful. I have a set here I'll link below that's got a lot of the short vowel uh, CVC words that is these are just some of the most simple for students to start reading with so that's why we do CVC consonant vowel consonant a lot um, there are some picture cards too if you print them front to back we'll have the word on the back of the picture so some people like that picture support again great for beginning readers ELL I like these blending cards because they've got the dots Again, just a way for students to track along and have some motion with there so they can tap the dots as they say each sound. And then as they blend it faster together, they slide on the arrow. So that's the idea behind this. So k, at, cat, okay? And they it might go through it more steps. K, at, k, at. They might have to do it a few times before they can tell that's cat, cat, okay? So that's the idea behind the blending dots is to say the individual sounds and then slide them all together. Those are great and they go through, um, or this resource has short A, short E, so same idea, web, web, web. Okay, so going through, through these is really helpful. If they are struggling and this is kind of new for them, 
there's nothing wrong with just direct instruction. There are various reading programs that this is how they teach and they can be very effective. I've used them in some school districts that I've been in and they can be successful. So that would look something like this. Whether they get it correct or not, you can just confirm, yes, that word is lip, l -i -p, lip. And then you could have them say it with me. So I do it, we do it together, and then they do it. Um, so I could model what I just did, l -i -p, lip, and then we do it together. Say it with me, l -i -p, lip and then your turn. So then have them do it themselves too. And then if they need it corrected, say they were off a little bit, then you just simply say that word is lip, l -i -p, lip. Okay, that's more of like a direct instruction style. Um, some people like it, some people don't, but it can be effective. So it's just something to think about. You can give it a shot and see. Or Good. Do the next one. Good. That word is mat. Let's do two more. Good job. That word is had. What's that word? What's the first sound? What's the sound? What's the next sound? Get your finger ready. What's that last sound? Good. Now let's see if you can blend it all together. Slide it together as you say all the sounds. What word? Fat. fat. Yeah, that word is fat. This is what's referred to as a blend chart. This one also happens to have the digraphs, which I'm just going to actually skip right over since we're not working on those today. Um, this blend chart is just some of the most common blends that there are. So like I mentioned earlier, you can obviously blend two sounds together that are not on this chart. These are just the more common consonant blends, which sometimes can be a little bit trickier to physically get your mouth to move to blend two consonants together as opposed to vowel sounds because those are more open sounds. So you can use this blend chart a lot of different ways. There's really no right or wrong way. Um, I think the more students use it, it can become a helpful tool for them that they can use then to transfer over to spelling and writing. So I use this a lot in the classroom and the students have their own little copy in their writing folder so they could actually refer back to it. Um, we would practice it during guided reading and um, shared reading often and then so they knew how to use it, they were familiar with it, and then it could help them on their own um, working through some reading and writing as well. Similar to an ABC chart, you can just go through and do the sound and then the visual to help them connect that. So bull block, cl clock, full flag, goal globe, soul slide. Okay, so that's the idea. They can practice through it. I think this is really helpful as just kind of a resource. So I would say have it available to your student. So if they are, maybe they come across a word and they see that it has the same beginning as one of the blends they know in their blend chart and they've practiced so they're familiar that the SP says the sound that's at the beginning of spider. So it can just give them some support as they are beginning to read.
there are some fun games that help students practice with their blends. This might be further along, maybe into more first, second grade, once they're familiar with the sounds. Um, these are some of the common blends on that blends chart. This resource is linked down below. So it's a spinner game. You will need a paper clip and a pencil and students will spin. They will get a blend. And then the idea is to make a real word. Not all of these will make a real word, but they're having to practice putting the blend together to make a word to find out if it is real or not. So grr, I, not a word, grr, A, gray, that would be a word. So they could write the GR blend, GR blend. Okay, so that's that game, that's a fun one. And then there's also a Go Fish game that I will link. Um, I'll show you a picture of it here. That one's down below. And the last thing I wanted to mention was just checking out any educational stores near you. The Dollar Tree has some good finds every once in a while. Um, this page I thought was pretty similar to what we are working on. It has them write a short E in it. And once they do that, they would be able to work on that word sounding all the sounds out similar to a sound box kind of that we were doing. So they would be able to decode it also similar to those flashcards we had where they would have written the E, B, ED, BED. And it's got the visual picture to help also. There are blends, end of the word blends, and then beginning of the word blends too. So worth a shot, sometimes you can find some good little um, different kind of phonics workbooks that work on lending skills. I hope all of that helps your child with their reading journey. If you're wondering where to go from here, learning to blend, then stay tuned for more in the series on teaching your child to read. You can like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notifications so you hear of upcoming videos, and thank you for watching. Have a blessed day.